And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed. To you it shall be for food. Genesis 129. Man did eat angels' food. He sent them meat to the full. Psalm 78, 25. Everyday Manna with Lisa. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Everyday Manna. On today's program, we are making one of my favorite foods. I was born in Baltimore, Maryland, and one of my earliest memories is going to the docks when the fishing boats came in and we would get a bushel or two of fresh blue crabs right off the bay, fresh from the boats. And we would bring those home and my mom would have this huge pot on the stove and she would steam those crabs. They're, they start out blue and then they turn a bright red and then you spread newspaper all over. The, the table where you're eating and you have mallets and you crack those crabs and you eat them and you pick them, that's what they're called. So today we're gonna feature one of my favorite foods and that is crab. And we are gonna make Maryland style crab cakes, which you can make year round because crab is available year round now thanks to pasteurization and processing and canned crab and fresh crab. So we're gonna make Maryland style crab cakes and we're also going to have another one of my favorites which is asparagus. I love asparagus and my, I like it best just simply roasted in the oven so we're going to have roasted asparagus and then just a simple green salad with a lemon vinaigrette dressing on the side. So let's get started. Now today we have got fresh asparagus. Now if you have never had this before it is one of the most delicious vegetables that there is. Uh, sometimes, you know, it, it can be a little intimidating, I guess, looking at it, thinking, what in the world do I do with this? But if you just get a bunch, it comes in bunches. You've seen it in the grocery store. Hold it in your hand and just simply bend it like that. Whoops. And where it breaks is where the tender part of the asparagus starts and where the little bit woodier part of the asparagus is on this end. This is good for soups or something like that, but you know, not so good for, for roasting. So take, clean your bunch, lay it out on your cutting board, break one spear, then lay that down, then take your knife and just simply cut the rest of the spears. And mine's going everywhere, but that's okay. Wherever the asparagus spear broke, then you can just cut the rest of your spears to match those and then we just I'll just keep those for another use but then you just have the fresh trimmed ro uh, asparagus that you can roast you can snap each and every individual little spear if you want but that's just a quicker easier way I have already cleaned this so then you just take a baking sheet just a plain baking sheet that you would cook cookies on bake cookies on and just uh, spread your asparagus out in a single lined you know a single row the, the tips all facing one end. Dress it very, very simply. Take olive oil and just go over the asparagus, just a little bit, I'd say probably, I don't know, two teaspoons or so of asparagus. Take some fresh kosher salt and just lightly go over the asparagus. And then take freshly ground pepper. A lot of pepper. I like a lot of pepper. You customize that to your taste, whatever you like. I just happen to like a lot of pepper. And that's it. And then you take it and with your hands just kind of toss it together to kind of get that olive oil distributed all around the spears. Preheat your oven to about oh, 425 degrees or so. You want a good hot oven to do this in. And then take your asparagus spears and just put them in the oven. And that really is all there is to asparagus. And just put them in your oven, and they take approximately, oh, seven to, to 10 minutes, depending on the thickness of your spears. If you get the little tiny asparagus spears, then it doesn't take but just, you know, maybe five or six minutes. If you get the thicker ones, you might take a little bit longer. You just wanna roast them until they're just slightly browned in places. I'll show you when we take them out of the oven. And, and they're just tender to the, to the tooth. They're just, you know, they're not crisp completely, but they're not mushy soft. Um, it is absolutely just one of the best ways to cook asparagus is just simply dress it with olive oil, salt, and pepper, put it in a hot oven, and let it go. Now, we're going to get started on our crab cakes. You can, of course, buy 
uh, the, the, the tubs of crab that come in any grocery store out there carries the different, back in the meat department, they will have little tubs of fresh crab. This is already picked. Most of it has been cleaned, but we also want to check that and go, you know, go, I'll go over that with you. What I like to do, because this can be a little bit expensive, but you know, if, if you get just one of this, this is like $7. And then in your, in the grocery store, every grocery store has canned crab meat. It's inexpensive. It's like $1.99 for a can of crab meat. You can get this to be, you know, to help bulk up the crab and then add one just of your, of your um, the, the lump crab meat. This tends to be a little finer. And I'll show you how we do this. You just simply open the cans of crab meat and you want to drain off. Now, as you can see, it does have quite a bit of liquid in the can, as you can tell, and it comes wrapped in this little bit of paper. But what you can do is just take that off and then just over a garbage can, and now I do have a garbage can over here, just kind of take your hand, as you can see, I'm just holding my hand over the meat, and I'm just draining out all of that liquid. You could use a strainer if you wanted to, but this is just an easy way. You know, God gave us two of the best kitchen tools right there on the end of your hand. And then just mix that. I've got, this is three in the bowl. I've already got two drained, but I wanted to show you how we do it. And I've already got two cans of the crab meat drained, and then I just added the third. And then I'm going to add the, the package of the lump. Now you see, if they'll get me a shot here, JR, how that is kind of finer and, and flaked more, whereas this crab meat in the, the, the container here is lumped up more, and it's just it's got more chunks in it. So the, the, the canned crab meat just helps to stretch this further. And then this does not have a lot of liquid in it, so you really don't have to worry all that much about draining it. Then take your hands and just kind of feel through the crab. Now what you're, it's called picking the crab, and what you're feeling for are little bits of cartilage or um, shell that they might have accidentally, you know, gotten in the crab meat. Very seldom when you buy processed meat like that do you, ha do you find much of that in there. I haven't felt any. Here's a piece of something I don't like the looks of, so we will just throw that away. Uh, I, you know, you very seldom will ever find the little bits of the cartilage, but I always like to double check and, you know, and just feel through it just to make sure I don't feel anything in there today. And uh, now if you're fortunate enough to get fresh crab, that the blue crabs or Dungeness crabs from the Pacific Northwest is excellent in this, or the blue crabs from the Bay. I'm partial to that because that's what I grew up eating, uh, the blue crabs from the Bay. If you can get whole crabs, and sometimes at your seafood markets, they will have the whole crab. You can, of course, steam the crab and then pick the crabs yourself and, and just take the meat out like this and just put it in a bowl, and then we're going to add some seasonings and spices to it. I'm going to take a quick break, and when I come back, I'm going to show you how you spice up the crab cakes and how you get them ready to go into the pan. Remember, the roasted asparagus is in the oven, and I'll be back with you in just a few minutes. Hey, and welcome back. We are cooking Maryland-style crab cakes today with roasted asparagus and a green salad on the side. We've already got our asparagus in the oven. The crab we have picked over and looked at. Now we're going to add some seasoning and a few little vegetables and things like that to the crab. Now what I have here are just two slices of white bread that you get every day of your life. We eat this every day. And I have cut off the crusts because I don't really want those dark bits of the crust. I've got a mini food chopper. If you don't have one of these, you need to get one of these. It's just, it's smaller than your big bulky food processor and it does a wonderful job for just chopping up, finely chopping up or dicing up onions or celery or whatever you're doing. In this case, we're going to make fresh breadcrumbs. You could use the prepackaged breadcrumbs that you can get in the grocery store. They're a little hard and they're a little bit crunchy and in something as delicate as crab meat, it's just better to do your own fresh breadcrumbs. So what we have here is just simply just two slices of white bread and we're going to pulse that till they're very, very, very fine in the food processor. And we'll pulse it. until it's just a very, very fine, crumbly 
um, just a you know just a finer dice of breadcrumb, and we're just going to add that straight into the crab cake. Now, what that does is that acts as a binder for the crab meat, and then we're going to add some celery. I love celery; it's just absolutely delicious. It's good and crunchy, and, and all of those things. And I'm going to go ahead and chop it a little bit on the finer side, and I'm just going to add it to the food processor. You could, if you wanted to take the time to just dice it in a real fine dice, maybe you don't have a little small food processor, you could take the time to dice it real small, but since I have one and it's right here, I'm just going to go ahead and put the celery, because celery tends to be a little bit stringy, so I'm just going to add the, um, the celery to the food processor and chop it in the food processor till it's real fine. Just takes a second or two, and then that's it. And see, that was very quick, very easy. And we, then we just add the diced, really fine chopped celery straight to your bread and your crab meat. And then we're going to add the onions. Now, I do like to chop my onions myself because I like to control you know, a little bit of what goes in there on the size-wise. Just cut off the ends. I'm using little small green onions. You could use a small regular onion if you wanted to. You could use a shallot. You could leave out the onion if you wanted to, if you don't like onion. Some people don't like onion. The scallions, I think, add just a very, very mild flavor. You want to get a fine dice on this because you don't want to bite into a big hunk of onion, so you do want to get a, a, a relatively fine chop on the green onions. Don't really want to use too much of the green. And then take your knife and just kind of go back over them just a little bit. And that just chops them just a little tiny bit more. and Just makes them a little finer. You could, of course, throw this into the food processor along with the celery if you wanted to. That would be okay also. And then just drop those into the crab and the other mixture. Then we're going to take a red bell pepper and we're only going to use about half of the bell pepper. You don't want to, to use that all. And you, again, you're going to do this very fine. Take your hands. Again, God gave you the best cooking tools that you've got on the end of your hands and just take the seeds and the membranes out and what you're left with is just sweet, wonderful, juicy red bell pepper. Slice it thin you want very small dice on this. Just slice it real thin. If you come upon a membrane, just take your knife and just kind of cut that out of there and then just continue making small, thin, almost shavings of the red bell pepper. And I think that probably, well, let's do a couple more, will be enough. I love bell pepper. I love to just eat it, the red bell pepper. I could just eat that whole red pepper just plain by itself. And then turn them and just, again, just make a very small, 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 small is the word, dice on the red pepper. Because you don't want big chunks of anything. You don't want anything to overpower the taste of the crab. Crab, if you've never tried it, is delicious. It's a very sweet meat. Um, it's very delicate flavored. It's, it's a very delicate, mild flavored vegetable, and I think that's plenty. Actually, I think that's probably a little too much red pepper, and we want to add just some red bell pepper. Let's just add, we'll leave a little bit of that for a garnish because that really is enough red bell pepper for our crab. Let's just put that to the side. Then, those are your vegetables that you're going to add in. Oh, no, forgot one thing. Let's add a little tiny bit of parsley. I love fresh parsley. It just adds a brightness to anything that you cook. Um, I, I'm not a fan of dried parsley. I do use a lot of dried spices and herbs. Parsley is not one of them. I think it just doesn't dry well. I think you're much better off getting just a fresh bunch of parsley at the grocery store. Rinsing it, cleaning it up when you bring it home, and then it's ready to go, you know, throughout the whole week. And a, and a bunch of parsley will last you a week, and you can just chop it real fine, mince it, and then add it to the crab mixture. Then you want to take some herbs and spices and, and add to them. We're going to add dry mustard 
to, I like a little bit of heat in mine, so I've got a teaspoon of dry mustard. You could, of course, add the wet mustard if you like. I like the flavor of dry mustard. I think it just adds something to the crab that just, it, just that little bit of spicy heat. Dry mustard has a little more heat to it. This is just Worcestershire sauce, about a teaspoon of Worcestershire, just to add a little bit of, of flavoring to it. One egg, and the egg is gonna act as a binder I'm going to go ahead and break the yolk of the egg and kind of just whisk that up just a little tiny, tiny bit. The egg will act as a binder to hold the mixture together. Of course, a little bit of salt. Remember, your crab does have some natural salt in it, but you want to add just a little bit of kosher salt. Freshly ground pepper. I've got my skillet preheating on a medium heat. You don't want your skillet too hot. Uh, you, of course, want it, you know, just a little bit with a, like a medium, medium, maybe a little bit above medium to high, but not, most certainly not on high. As a matter of fact, I think I'm going to turn mine down just a little bit um, and just get that just, just warmed up. And then we're going to saute these in a little bit of olive oil and um, a little bit of butter for flavor. This is just mayonnaise. Now, you want to start with, I'd say, I don't know, two to three tablespoons full and see where you end up. You might need to add just a little bit more mayonnaise. That's just something you've got to play by ear. I'll show you what I mean when we get a little closer to time to patting them out. Then, the key to Maryland style crab cakes is Old Bay seasoning. Old Bay seasoning has got Tons. It's got celery, pepper, coriander, just spices galore. It's very good, very spicy, very hot. I love it, absolutely love it. You want to add about a tablespoon of Old Bay seasoning. It's very strong. You do not want to overpower the crab cakes with the Old Bay seasoning. And then take a just a, a small uh, rubber spatula. You want to fold in the crab meat. I'm going to go to a break real quick. I'm just going to keep folding up the crab meat. When I come back, we're going to patty it out and fry it, and we're going to eat it, and we're going to taste our asparagus, and we'll be right back in just a minute. Hey, and welcome back. We are going to finish up our crab cakes now. I, over the break, I just simply stirred up my crab meat. I did add the rest of the mayonnaise. If your mixture seems just a little bit wet, then you can add just a little bit of flour to it and that'll kind of help bind it. You could, if you wanted to, you could substitute tuna and use the same recipe and used canned tuna or chopped up shrimp, the canned shrimp that you can get and chop that up real fine. And you could use that or you could use the crab like we're doing today. I have preheated my skillet and I added uh, about one tablespoon of butter and about three tablespoons or so of olive oil. The olive oil will help raise the cooking temperature of the butter. You know how butter sometimes will burn, but the olive oil will help to raise the cooking temperature of the butter that adds so much flavor, but yet the olive oil will keep it from burning. So what we want to do now, and this is a little bit on the messy side, take, I don't know, three to four ounces or so, let's add a little more, of your crab, and you want to form a patty about the size of that. If you can see that real quick, and we can, we want to form a patty about like this. And then I have a plate here with just regular flour, just all purpose flour. I seasoned it with just a little bit of salt and a little bit of pepper. And you want to kind of dust the outsides of your crab cakes with flour and then just place them into your hot skillet. And then it'll just sizzle away. And we'll make one more here. And we'll cook these up. Just patty it out just like this. Take a little flour, kind of go on the outside. And I think I can raise the temperature of my skillet just a little bit more. You know, anytime you work with flour, it's just messy, isn't it? But oh, so good. And just kind of, the flour just acts as a binding agent and kind of just helps keep the crab meat together. And we're just going to put that on there. We're going to raise our temperature on my stove just, just a little tiny bit. Smells so good. I love the smell of crab. I do want to encourage you, if you've never, ever tried 
the canned crab meats. It comes right on the same aisle where you buy your tuna fish or your um, the canned corned beef that we, we all love with cabbage. It comes on the same aisle with that. Usually it's up on the top shelf or maybe the second shelf down. And it just comes in cans. And it, it is perfectly good. And it's, it's absolutely delicious in a recipe like this. And you can use the canned crab meat, which isn't, you know, it's not as expensive as the other. And then just get that going. And I believe our asparagus is done. I'm going to get, I've got room for one more in there. Let's go ahead and, and get this in there. It is messy, 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 messy. And we will get one last crab cake in the skillet there. And let that cook away. And now we're going to get our asparagus out of the oven. I, I smell it and I know that it is done. And it is so good, you have to try this. And as you can tell, as you can see, it's just slightly browned, just a little bit browned on the edges, and it just kind of shrivels a little bit. And it's absolutely delicious. And we're just going to set that to the side. Let that cool off for just a second. We're going to check our crab cakes. Now, I did, the crab cakes are in the oven, or in the skillet, excuse me, and we're going to just turn this last one. You see how goldeny brown they get? They just, they just, they are so incredibly good. I love crab. Like I said, you could substitute tuna. You could use chopped shrimp. You could do whatever that you wanted to do. Now, for, we're going to serve this with just a little bit of a green salad while the crab cakes are finishing up. They just take, I don't know, two to three minutes on either side. Um, the crab, of course, is already cooked. You're really just softening the vegetables is what you're doing and warming the crab and getting those flavors a chance to meld together. I like simple, easy dressings. I, I, I'm not a big fan of, of real heavy salad dressings. I think what we're going to do today is just a simple lemon vinaigrette. Remember the trick of just zesting your lemon. Most of the flavor of any citrus fruit is in the rind on the outside, the, le the, the yellow zest that is on the outside. And just get you a microplane. That's what this is. It's just an old-fashioned wood rasp that we've adapted to the kitchen. And zest your lemon. Make sure that you do tap your microplane because a lot of times it will stick to the back of it. You want just a little bit of zest in there. It just adds some flavor to it. And then just cut your lemon in half and just squeeze a little tiny bit of lemon juice in there. It is true that if you squeeze a lemon facing up toward your hand, the, the seeds stay in the lemon and you don't have seeds in your dressing. So we're going to squeeze one lemon. The crab cakes are smelling good. Just get the juice out of one lemon. Kind of uh, just whisk that together. A little tiny bit of salt. I really like simple salad dressings. I, I don't, I, I'm not a big fan of the heavier dressings. Just a little salt, a little pepper. You could, of course, if you don't want to use the lemon juice, you could use balsamic vinegar, red vinegar, whatever kind of vinegar you like, apple cider vinegar. And then as you're whisking, I need to switch, I'm a lefty here. As you're whisking, whisk in just a little tiny bit of olive oil. I like mine actually a little more vinegar to oil. It's up to you, whatever you like. If you whisk as you pour, it will emulsify and the oil and the vinegar will stay together. And so there's just a little tiny bit of just a, a light vinaigrette dressing. And you see how it just kind of gets that creamy? That's because I have whisk while I put the lemon in there and it just kind of emulsifies it together. It's simple and easy. I have just a little tiny um, simple salad that I have bought ready to go in the grocery store. Just dress that with just a little tiny bit of your olive oil and lemon dressing. Put just a few spears of your asparagus on there, however you, much that you like. And then take one of your delicious, yummy crab cakes 
and put right there on your plate. You could wedge a lemon and add to it, but that is one of my favorite meals, and that is a fresh Maryland-style crab cake with asparagus and green salad. Enjoy. I have enjoyed being with you today. I can't wait to eat this, and I will see you next time on Everyday Manor. If you enjoyed this episode of Everyday Manna and would like a copy of today's recipes, please write Living Faith Television, CO Everyday Manna, PO Box 1867, Abingdon, Virginia, 24212, or visit our website at www.livingfaithtv.com. Please be sure to include the program number found on the bottom of the screen in your letter so we will know which recipes you would like. Thanks for watching and join us again for the next episode of Everyday Manna.